In the last video, we talked about consumer surplus at an individual level. And if you're talking about a specific individual, recall that consumer surplus is just equal to their maximum willingness to pay minus the price that they actually pay. Now, in a market, you've got multiple different consumers, and it's pretty simple to go from the individual level to the market level. Okay, If you take every consumer in a market and you measure his or her consumer surplus, then you add up the consumer surplus of all those consumers in the market, then you get the market consumer surplus. Okay, And it turns out that you can use the demand curve to calculate that market consumer surplus quite simply. And the way that you do that is take the demand curve and you look at the area on the demand curve that is above the price line that you've drawn and below the demand curve. That's gonna give you a triangle and that the area of that triangle uh, is going to be equal to the consumer surplus in the market. So let's go through a simple example of that. Here I've got a market where the demand curve starts at 1000 on the Y axis, the price axis, and it goes down to a price of zero, which hits at a quantity of 200. Let me label that axis as well. Okay, now suppose that in this market, the seller charged a price of $500 per unit. So we would just draw a line across from $500 till we hit the demand curve, and then straight down from the demand curve till we hit the quantity. And notice that at a price of $500, there would be 100 units that were sold, okay? Now, what I told you on the, the pre previous sheet of paper is that the consumer surplus in this market is gonna be the triangle that's made up of the area below the demand curve and above this price line. Why would that be the case? Well, the demand curve tells you the highest price that each consumer would be willing to pay for every unit of the good. Okay, so that's the willingness to pay that's being mapped out on the demand curve. The price, it tells you the price that each consumer actually has to pay. And remember that we said a consumer surplus is equal to the difference between those two numbers. Okay, so that if I calculate the area of this triangle right here, I will have found the consumer surplus for the entire market. Okay, now how would I find the area of that triangle? Well, remember just from basic geometry that the area of a triangle is equal to the length times the height. Okay, well, what is the length of this triangle? It's just equal to the quantity of units that are demanded at the price. At a price of 500, 100 units are going to sell. So that quantity of 100, in general, we would call that quantity the quantity demanded, okay? What about the height of this, this triangle? Well, it's going to be the difference between this y-intercept of the demand curve. In other words, the highest price that the demand curve hits, the difference between that y-intercept and the price that is being charged in this market. That's going to give us the height. Now I'm going to refer to this y-intercept of the demand curve as y with a d subscript, the y-intercept of the demand curve. Take that, subtract out the market price, y sub d minus p, that is the height of the rectangle. And that tells you that at the market level, consumer surplus will be equal to the y-intercept of the demand curve, minus the price, times the quantity demanded, and then we divide by two because it's a triangle. So let's just go through this particular example to calculate the consumer surplus in this market. What is that equal to? Well, we have numbers to plug in for each of these variables, y, d, p, and q sub d. So the y-intercept of the demand curve in this case is $1,000. I'm gonna drop the dollar sign for the moment. 
We're gonna sub the the price is five hundred dollars per unit. We're gonna multiply that by the quantity of units demanded, which is one hundred, and then divide the entire thing by two. Okay, what is? Let's simplify that. What's that equal to? Well, one thousand minus five hundred is five hundred, and if you multiply five hundred by one hundred. That gives you fifty thousand. So fifty thousand dollars divided by two, and that, of course, is equal to twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay. So in this case, with this demand curve, we can calculate that the consumer surplus is twenty-five thousand dollars. Now, notice that depends on the price that's being charged. If we cut the price to say $400 or $300, then we're gonna get a larger quantity demanded. And so I'd have to change up both the price and the quantity demanded, and that's going to change my consumer surplus. Similarly, as I increase the price, that's going to reduce the quantity demanded while the price goes up. Okay, and that's going to uh, change the consumer surplus. It should also be pretty obvious that as I raise the price, the area that's below the demand curve and above the price line is gonna be smaller and smaller, right? That creates a smaller and smaller triangle. As you cut the price, consumer surplus is going to get larger because the area under the demand curve that's above the price line is gonna get bigger and bigger, okay? But that's the way that you would calculate consumer surplus if you knew the demand curve, and it's a pretty straightforward um, calculation to make. In the next video in this lecture series, we're going to talk about what happens when the demand curve shifts to the right or to the left. In other words, an increase of dem in demand or a decrease in demand, and we're gonna talk about what factors can actually make that happen.